girls compromised. He heard the familiar morning coming through the open window and tiptoed to peek in. His eyes darted back and forth until they came to rest on the two body lump sprawled on the bed. There they were again. His sister lay flat on her back, her legs split high and wide, pushing the naked girl's head held firmly between both hands as far into her pussy as he could. Her hips rose and fell more and more quickly. He reached down and found a pebble at his feet, and just as his teenage sister was about to come, he threw it through the window and hit the naked girl on the back of the head right between her two natin braids. Startled, she jumped and pulled her face away, the thick lips juicy with passion. He ran away howling with laughter. She had dreamed so many times of long, thick black hair that when blow dried, fell over her back, luscious and sexy, a woman's true glory. She had dreamed it so often, not that she was incapable of growing such a man. She just didn't really want it in real life, but with all the maintenance. That by the time she was 50 years old, she had actually believed that she had worn her hair out and worn it that way. It was a satisfying and alternate reality she had constructed for herself. The best of two years. When she was 11 years old, before she knew what Missy's was or why it happened, she had a crush on a 17-year-old man. She used to dream that they would be sitting outside in his Volkswagen bug in front of the house where she and her family boarded rooms in his family's home. Their feet up on the dash, his cock exposed hard as a rock, her dress up and panties down. She knew what to imagine because she had seen her brother's little baby chick cocks that were longer at times than at others, but especially because she had seen her father's many times pointing straight out from his body. In her grown-up years between 21 and as much as 60 years old, she did not want to be a teenager again, ever. How silly they are, how nothing they know. Their angst is not in you. Their bruises and bruising leaves and double marks. But she acted like a teenager when she was 64, staying up till 6.30 in the morning with her school buddies, her posse, all of whom were young enough to be in the water, and want her rainbow. They defaced someone's own property. They giggled and giggled. She used her brother's candy apple red GTO for the full bucket seats flashing by to cruise girls. Except she didn't know where to find them and always returned it unused. Because she wanted to make her life more interesting than that of a middle class girl being raised in a typically black single parent home. She, she told her junior high and high school girlfriends that her sailor brother was gay. Years later, when a close friend she hadn't seen in decades came out to her and asked after the brother, she told her that he was not gay and had never been. She had also told her younger girlfriends that her father was a doctor. She wasn't a part of their clique, so they laughed and pointed at the blood stain on her apple green corridor skirt as she walked ahead of them in the corridor. Before they could finish their heckling, a fist smaller than a tennis ball, with the sting of a golf ball hit by the with the sting of a golf ball hit the leader from behind square in the kidneys, taking her by surprise and knocking her along with him to the floor. Before she masturbates, she does the same thing she does before she pours that first glass of wine, hesitates. Stops thoughts from trying to censor her. Acts like someone is watching, like someone is going to judge her. If she drinks too much alcohol, does she masturbate too often? Watching the Maury Povich show, her elderly friend of 89 years screwed up her face and asked, what can two women do for one another? The old lady had confessed on previous occasions that she was in need of and wanted a male companion. What exactly did that mean? She wasn't into blowjobs. Old sex is a sin. 
The octogenarian had also told her previously that some gentleman about 10 years from Julie wanted her to, yep, suck him off. Those were her words. She had been highly offended and disgusted, although those are the exact words she used to describe what he wanted her to do. Suck him off. She caught him cheating on her, and she chased him out of the house and down the street, his cock waving and bouncing like a, flat, a fat black rubber flag of surrender. Miraculously, a bullet caught him in the ass, and he went down hard on the cold sidewalk. She called her closest friend, who would have any clue about what to do, a workplace associate who had a VA degree, more education than any friend or family member she had grown up with, Past midnight when her friend was high on weed and had fallen asleep on her living room floor. The pocket could smell the drum, but she played into it. <coughs> Fortunately, her colleague had not killed her husband, as hysterics would have better him believe. The raging of hormones and ghetto insane. After finals were over that day in June 1966, they decided to celebrate by going out for Chinese. Sure enough, the usual suspect didn't have enough money on her to cover her portion of the bill, two dollars and ninety-nine cents. She had not disappointed. Did you like to file the long comments? They asked her, because you ate most of them. One of her brothers tried to stick his cock inside her baby pussy when she was only eleven years old and he fourteen. She assented, but because neither knew what they were doing, nothing really happened. When she was 15, however, and another and different brother tried to pin him to his bed and kiss him on the mouth, and she knew that was wrong, and gyrated against her with the belly hips, she ran downstairs and told her mother that that Sunday morning, and their mother said it was her fault that she was a little whore for turning her brother on. Excuses herself. 
to look for hours into the mirror on her bedroom wall and comb 